Welcome, Take It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Josh Gleason, who is the Director of Product Marketing at Noodle.ai. Hi, Josh. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You know, I was thinking about AI, machine learning, there's so much data going on, everybody's kind of leveraging the tools to have an advantage. Um, and your company is doing some great projects for large retailers. So I wanted to hear more about this company. First of all, if you could describe what is Noodle.ai and w where are you focusing? Yeah, so Noodle AI is um, really trying to apply artificial intelligence to create a world without waste. And I think a lot of people are familiar with artificial intelligence. It's in the news, self-driving cars and Netflix recommendations. Yeah. And I talked to Siri and Alexa and so on and so forth. But what's really interesting is those are all kind of consumer applications. Mm -hmm. And um, you know the waste side of things, if we want to create a world without waste, over 90% of the waste in this world comes from industrial sources. I see. So a consumer-focused play is not going to do it for us. Mm. And so what we've really done is focused our artificial intelligence um, engines and algorithms on uh, three specific industries uh, that we think are kind of core to the global economy. One is manufacturing, mm -hmm. one is transportation, and then one is consumer product supply chain. Okay. And so it's... Um, Let's dive in a bit. Explain sure. uh, the use cases, for example, in yeah. uh, the transportation. Yeah. Yeah. So I can actually, I can just quickly go over all three. So. Um, in manufacturing, we're, we're really looking at three things. Um, one is what we call production flow. Mm. It's actually the, how, how the, the flow of materials work their way through the factory. Um, another one is product quality. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty obvious, you know, the quality of the product, is it on spec or not? Um, and then the third is asset health. Mm -hmm. So how is your equipment doing? Is it going to break down? Do you need maintenance, et cetera? On the transportation side, we've got um, two solutions. One is what we call fleet health. So imagine asset health in the factory, but just put some wheels on it, yes. and you have kind of the, the solution there. And then the other one is called transportation network, and I like to equate that to the production flow of instead of raw materials moving their way through a plant, in this case, it's you know finished goods or, or products to be shipped working their way through the transportation network to get to their destination. Right, that logistics yeah, monitoring. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. And then the last one is the consumer products side of things, and that's really what we call our supply chain AI application. Mm. So that is investigating kind of all of the, the hairy elements in a supply chain when a company may have 100,000 SKUs or, or kind of unique product codes um, and 100 distribution centers and the whole mess that goes along with trying to optimize inventory or demand planning or, or raw materials planning or production planning. You know, in, in your company, it's a, it's a very consultative approach to selling because you're trying to solve problems for people. So explain a little bit of the approach and how you got to the point where you actually now have defined products. Because yeah. at the beginning, the founders came out of the consulting business, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think we were founded on Pi Day, 31416, mm -hmm. so about three and a half years ago. Um, and really with that consulting background, there was no, or there was very little at the time, AI applied to industry. Mm. And so I think our, our first approach to companies um, to be kind of customers was that, hey, give us all your data, tell us all your problems, and we'll kind of noodle on what we can um, you know, solve for you guys. And I think over the course of iteration, company to company and industry to industry, over the past few years, we've narrowed down our application focus. Mm -hmm to really things where there's repeatability. We don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. Yep, yep. Um, there's actionability, mm -hmm. meaning what we're telling you isn't just cool information to have. You can act on it. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there's real business value right. being created. And so today, as I mentioned, we've got those kind of three industries, six total products there, um, and that drives kind of our go-to-market efforts. And you have a lot of success stories like yeah. that you can then uh, share with potential companies who are looking yeah. to solve some of these challenges. Yeah, because I think one of the things that's really interesting is there's, um, you know, I alluded to it earlier, the, the 100,000 SKUs and the 100 distribution centers, like, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem, like, they're talking to us about that because they can't solve it themselves. Mm -hmm. Their rule-based software that they're currently using, their ERP, ERP software, can't solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So 
the, you know, there's complexity there. The solution that we're bringing to the table is a complex solution, machine mm -hmm. learning and deep learning. And we have some, some patented and proprietary algorithms that we use too. And so you have all this complexity. Sometimes the best thing to do is just tell a story, you know? Don't, don't make it sound overly complex. Hey, what you are facing right now sounds a lot like what we did over here. Mm -hmm. And let me explain to you the details there. So it's really, I think, about you know, the most effective messaging is not the one that's you know, technically over the top or super complex or, hey, we're really smart. It's, hey, you know, we've seen this before. It's going to be OK. Let's work together and, and, and move towards a solution. So in your role in, in product marketing, um, you, you have to work with a lot of the product side, but the sales side and, yeah. and the marketing side. Yeah. What lessons learned in your journey that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think it's um, if you start with the customer or the prospective customer, um, you know, everybody has a different background, their, you know, their role within that company. Um, what they had for breakfast that morning, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think for me to be most effective, it's taking that complexity and communicating a simple message mm -hmm. to them that resonates. Um, but what works for one person who has a, the same title as another person at another company might not work. Mm -hmm. And so taking the inputs from, from the marketing team, from the sales team, from you know some of our business unit leaders, from the product team, from engineering, data science, all of this, and kind of mashing them all up together um, and just, you know, being flexible in knowing what you want to convey, but having a number of different ways that you can convey that message, mm -hmm. I think is really important because, again, it, I, I firmly believe that, yes, people know we're smart. We have a lot of PhDs on staff and all that, but that's not what's, what's going to win us deals. What's going to win at the end of the day is, hey, these guys are presenting a really good value proposition. I get what they're trying to do. I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Let's move ahead. And you're going after very large clients. It's not like the massive amount of companies, but more of the smaller quantity of very large potential clients. Yeah, we are not, um, we're not going after mom and pop mm -hmm. shops. Um, we're never going to have a, a thousand or a hundred thousand customers. Um, you know, right now we have, um, a good number of customers. Can you name um, any? I can name um, success stories. I can name some success stories. Um, a company called BRS. They're a steel manufacturer in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, Transplace and NFI are two companies that are kind of in the transportation space. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not at liberty right now to name any of our our movers and shakers on the consumer product side. Okay. Talk to me in three months, and I probably will. Okay. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, we're we're targeting companies that have you know, generally speaking, over a billion dollars in revenue. Mm. Many of them have far more than that. Yep. And so I think with the size of operation, with revenue of, of that size, the problems become a scale where AI is the right solution. Yes. Anything smaller than that, it may not be, may not provide the value that right. they need. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so if we can get 100 customers by the end of 2020, 2021, something of that sort, that would be a great success. So that's the kind of, that's the scale we're looking for. So what challenges are you facing? The, the awareness or yeah. finding the right opportunity? Yeah, I think awareness is, it's going pretty well. I mean, we, uh, last year we're the top AI startup on LinkedIn. Um, this year we've been named to the Forbes AI 50 mm -hmm. and um, we were named a cool vendor by Gartner. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that kind of you know, press and analyst validation mm -hmm. that people recognize the name. Um, I, I think we're right now at that tipping point of, hey, let's not talk about what we can do. Why don't you talk to this customer about what we can do? Once you get to that point where you right. have enough right. reference, yeah, yeah, yeah. that I think is where things really start to take off. I agree. It's a um, lot more credibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Um, what's what's ahead? What's exciting on the innovation side or maybe on the marketing front? Yeah, yeah. So um, a couple of things that I, I think are really interesting. We have a um, we have a partnership. So Dell is one of our investors. Yes. Um, we also have a partnership with them and Intel for what we call our enterprise AI platform. Mm -hmm. And what that really is about is kind of creating or, or giving, you know, the impetus towards a smart factory mm -hmm. as part of you know, what is commonly known as Industry 4.0. Yes. And I think the the cool thing there is, is we believe we're the first company to really approach building a data platform specifically for 
artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so that requires optimizing kind of the, the high frequency, high fidelity data streams that go into the system. You have to optimize storage because those high frequency data, data streams take up a lot of storage space. Mm -hmm. So cost effectively optimizing storage, um, providing enough compute power so that you can actually do the, the machine learning and, and process you know, the analytics that you need to. And then bringing it back down to kind of AI at the edge, which is where the, the Dell hardware comes, comes back into play, so that you can have AI connected to equipment on the factory floor running the manufacturing process. Wow. So it takes kind of human hands out of the day-to-day -day grind mm -hmm. of, of running the manufacturing mm -hmm. process. And that's kind of the, the intrigue with Industry 4.0 is kind of that you know, factory that runs itself if you will. So that's that's one cool thing. Um, I think the other cool thing is just kind of that trajectory of, of growth that we're seeing. Um, we continue to have, you know, good revenue results. We're, we're getting more customers. We're hiring more people. Um, and we're really starting to, I think, get over the hump of becoming, you know, you know, from being a, a, a just a startup company to somebody that's actually making real impact with real enterprises at scale. Excellent. That's, that's exciting. So I think 2019 till date's been really good. I think Q4 is going to be really good. Um, but 2020, I think that's when we put on the, the jet engines and we start going. Excellent. I think those are great technology partnerships you have in play right now. So Yeah. yeah they certainly exciting. lend credibility. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, they... Yeah, I, I don't know of, I'd be hard pressed to find a company that doesn't at least have some Dell or Intel equipment in there. So yeah. talk about door opening, it's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Josh, for being on the show and talking Absolutely. about AI, machine learning, uh, noodle.ai. Appreciate you being on the show. Pleasure having you, thank you. There you have it, folks. Take it up with Jessica Lee, Josh Gleason from noodle.ai.